This is going to be the third and the final part in which we're going to combine all the edits that we did from part one and part two of this fast paced reel editing series into one clip. So if you haven't watched those videos, you can go ahead and watch them. The link will be in the description below for both the parts. And once you're done with that, you can come back to this video, edit the part that we're going to create in this one. And then finally, we're going to combine all of them together into one clip. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's drag in a fusion composition and press Ctrl D and change the duration to 0219. Now let's head over to this fusion composition, open in fusion page. And right here, we're going to drag in a background. Connect this with the media out and change the alpha to zero. Now let's go over to our assets. And from here, you can drag in this person image, the person art image, connect this with the background. And while you have this selected, go ahead and click on color corrector. Now over here from the color corrector, I'm just going with this blue color. You can of course choose any color that you want, but this is the color that I'm going with. And now let's drag this image once again. So we're going to use this image that we just dragged to create the outline for this image that we have. So drag in this background and change the color to green. And while you have this selected, click on this matte control and connect this image with the matte control. Now, while you have this selected, press 1, and this is the preview that you will get. Now, while you have this mat control selected, press Control space and search for Delta Keyer. Now, click on Delta Keyer, press 1, and use this dropper tool to drag this in to this green image, and now you have this black outline. Now, connect this media in with the Delta Keyer, and go over to the Delta Keyer in the mat, and from here, change the road direct to 0.005. And now change the replace mode to hard color. And this is the color code that I'm going with. So make sure you change the error data to 0 0.005. And this is the outline that you will get. Now what you can do is just add in a merge node and connect the delta here with the merge node. So this is the outline that we can see now. Now let's drag in this rectangle, connect this with the merge tool. Create a keyframe at center, width and height. At 10 frames, go over to 9 frame and just move this around somewhere. And you can either move this around, you can also change the width or the height as well. That's up to you. But what I'm going to show you is a style or a technique that you can use. So go back one more frame, go to 8 frames, change this once again. So you can just slightly change this, that's up to you. You can change it from the width, height, the center position that's totally up to you go to seven seven frames do the same thing go to six frames do the same thing and finally at five frames do the same thing so basically at the fifth frame what we're going to do is we're just going to move this all the way out and this is how it will look now so this is the effect that you will get and you can do this randomly now while you have this delta gear selected press control space search for glow add this in and over here in the glow, I'm just going to change the glow size to 80. So here, if you go over to 10 frames, here you can see the difference now. All right, so let's go ahead and add in a multi-merge. And for this multi-merge, let's drag in this text three times. So, and with the text too, let's add in a glow node connect the first text with the multi merge and over here let's go ahead type in our text position position this right here and change the font to future at bold now let's connect our second text the glow text what you can do is just copy the settings from text one paste them in text two paste settings and just simply change in the text what you're going to write at the text so right here i'm just going to change the position the size to 0 0.15 actually let's go a little bit lower 0 .0 0 0.13 let me position them 
and you can just use this dropper tool to change the color so I'm just going to use this image to get this green blue color so let's go over to multi merge and click on this glow this is actually the text tool so let me just rename this and go over to apply mode change this to difference now let's go over to glow and change this to 0 0.85 or 89 so this depends on you what kind of effect that you're looking for but you can play around with these settings and you will get a different kind of style so as you can see right here if you play around with this glow size and glow you will get different kinds of effect so what I'm going to do is change the glow size to 70 and glow to 0 0.85 so this is what I'm going with now let's connect the text 3 with the multi merge and of course you can just copy the same settings from text 1 paste them in text 2 and just simply change in your text and also let's change the color to this one now you can reduce the size so this is something that you will get but let me go ahead to text 2 and change the font to Futura at this one bold move this up so in the text 2 change the size to 0 0.15 and in the text 3 let's change this to 0 0.05 So let me change the glow size to 25. So I think this looks good now. So now in the text one, let's go over to four frames, create a keyframe at opacity and at zero, let's change this to zero. Let's go over at eight, do the same thing for text two, but this time we're going to start this from two. So go over at two and change this to zero. Now in the text three, let's go over to 10 and in the shading create a keyframe at opacity and at six frames let's change this to zero so this is how it will look all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to add in this image plane 3d and let's also go ahead add in this merge 3d press control space search for render 3d and now let's connect the multi merge with the image plane 3d and render 3d with the media out so from here, we're just going to go into a 3D mode and we need to add 3D, you can say transition. Now let's go ahead and drag in text two times. So make sure you just drag in these two text. Just, just go ahead with text 2D, 2D text. You don't have to go with 3D text and you can just add in this glow with both of these text nodes. So we're just going to go with the default settings for the glow. And while you have the glow selected, click on image plane 3D and image plane 3D for both these texts. Now let's go ahead, type in our text. Font, same font that we used before. We're going with Futura at bold. Let's change the size to 0 0.05. And let's change the line spacing to 0 0.7. And now let's connect this with the merge 3D one. Now let's click on Merge 3D1, go over to Transform, and from here, let's change the settings. So in the Y, let's change this to minus 0 0.043. And in the Z, let's change this to 1.74. So this is how it will look. And from here, right click on this text, click on Follower, and go over to this Modifiers, change the delay to 0 0.3, go over to Shading, and over here at 30 frames, let's click it. Create a keyframe at opacity and go over to 20 frames and change this to zero. So this is how it will look now. Now click on Merge 3D1 and search for, press control space, search for Transform 3D. And from here, we're just going to go over to 15 frames, create a keyframe at Z, at both the translation and rotation. Now look, let's go all the way to zero and change the Z to minus 0 0.5. And in the rotation, let's change this to 20. So if you play this, this is how it will look. Now let's go over to 30 frames. And from here, let's create a keyframe at X, Y. And also let's change the Z to minus 0 0.4. And also create a keyframe at Y and Z at the rotation. So this is how the whole thing looks now. Now let's go over to 50 frames. 
and from here let's change the x to minus 0 .0, 0 0.116 and let's change the y to 0 0.203 and let's change the and let's just create a keyframe at z keep this at z minus 0 0.4 and finally add the y in rotation let's change this to minus 28.7 so that's how the transition will look like. And now in the text tool, let's type in our text using the same font, Futura Bold. And now let's connect this to the Merge 3D. Go over to Transform for the Image Plane 3D for this text. Change the X to 0.664, Y to minus 0.164, and the Z to 1. And in the Y at the rotation, let's change this to 25. So this is how it will look now. And again, right click, click on follower, go over to modifiers, change the delay to 0 0.3. And in the shading, we can just create a keyframe at opacity right here at 50th frame. And then go over to 45 frames, change this to zero. So this is how it will look now. Now let's drag in this dollar bill add this image plane 3d for this one as well and connect this with the merge 3d now in this image plane 3d in the transform let's just change the scale to 0 0.5 go over at x change this to 0 0.044 y to minus 0 0.33 and the z let's and in the z rotation let's change this to minus 38 so this is how it will look in the material, you can go over at 49th frame right here, create a keyframe at opacity and go over at 47th frame and change this to zero. So this is how it will look. Now let's add in another text two times. And in this one, let's type in our text. Go ahead with the same settings that we did before Futura. But this time, let's go with the extra black. And with this selected, just add in our glow and add in this image plane 3D. Connect this with the merge 3D. Now let's go over to image plane 3D in the transform. Let's change the X to 0.99, Y to Z minus 0.37, and the Z to 1.6. Let's also change the scale to 1.3. So all these settings that I'm showing you is so that they can work with this transition that we are doing with the transform. And let's go ahead and copy the settings from this text, paste it in text seven, add in a glow for this one as well, and also an image plane three. So basically this allows us to position them in the 3D format. And right here in the image plane 3D for this text, let's go ahead and change the X to 0.99 y to minus 0.45 and the z to 1.6 and let's also change the scale to 1.95 so now let's connect this with the merge 3d and over here in the text let's just change this to this one own and this is how it will look like now now right here in the text 6 let's create this follower modifier change the delay to 0.2 and in the shading, let's go over at 55 frames, create a keyframe at opacity, and at 50, let's change this to zero. So this is how it will look now. So now let's go over to transform, and let's go all the way to the end, and change the Z to minus 0 0.73. So this is how it will look now. Now in the text 7, let's go over to shading and right here at 60, create a keyframe at opacity and then at 55, let's change this to 0. So this is how the whole thing looks now, as you can see. Now let's go over to spline. Make sure everything else is unselected except for the transform 3D. So only keep this transform 3D selected. Select all these keyframes, hit S on the keyboard, and this is how the animation will look now. So this is the animation for the third part, as you can see.
So right here, let's go ahead, create a new timeline and let's just type in compile and select use project settings, go to format, use vertical resolution. And now we can just drag these timelines in the part one timeline that we did in the part one of this series, the part two from the part two series. And now the one that we just did in this video, the part three. And this is how the whole thing looks now. And now we can just add in this voiceover. So I will just link it in the assets that I have in the link from the link in the description. You can download the same thing that I have right here. You will just you won't be getting the video. You will just be getting the voiceover. So don't worry. I will also cut it to this this position right here so that you can just drag that in. And this is how the whole thing will look now. So this was it for this video and also for this whole series that we have been doing about the fast paced editing in DaVinci Resolve. And I hope this was really helpful for all those people who are looking to create fast paced animations for their reels in DaVinci Resolve. So with that being said, thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.